You said you come into my house on the day my daughter's to be married and you ask me to do murder. We are going to make you an offer you can't refuse. Today, we will tell you about the saga that has become a cult classic and served as one of the foundations of the new Hollywood era. The Godfather is a phenomenon of the film industry. It is one of the most famous, quoted, and parodied movies that breathed new life into the almost forgotten gangster genre. The first two parts were called a masterpiece. Critics, viewers, and professional filmmakers discussed enthusiastically about the genius of the director. What is the reason for the enduring popularity of the crime saga? What did the author really want to say in the first part? And why did the third part become a real failure after the triumphant march of the first two films? Welcome to the About Movies channel. Get comfortable. We're starting. The film, released in 1972, has taken an honorable place in the top lines of the best films in the history of cinema for half a century and is considered the standard of directorial skill. And according to the American Film Institute, The Godfather is recognized as the most grandiose gangster movie. Six million dollars that was allocated for the film eventually brought more than 750 million in box office worldwide, which exceeded the budget by more than 40 times. By today's standards, such results are achieved by blockbusters, but they initially have a large budget. The studio initially did not count on the great financial success of the picture and set a modest budget for it, and Coppola got the opportunity to realize his creative potential without obstacles. Only the first part of the trilogy was awarded three Oscars at once for Best Actor, Best Film of the Year, and Best Adapted Screenplay. In total, the film was nominated in 11 categories. In addition, The Godfather became a turning point in the career of the then-unknown director Francis Coppola. The young man who shot the first part at the age of just over 30 has become a true classic of the art of directing. Later, he admitted that he doubted the success of the project, considering it purely commercial. But thanks to George Lucas, who saw great potential in The Godfather, he changed his mind. The cult film became the founder of the fashion for Italian-Americans in Hollywood cinema. Coppola, an Italian by birth, was able to convey all the specifics of the mentality of his people, which was almost not reflected in American cinema at that time. It was a very high level, which famous masters of gangster cinema had to strive for. Among them were the Coen brothers, who shot the wonderful Miller's Crossing, about the wars between gangsters during Prohibition, and Martin Scorsese, who gave us a crime drama with elements of black humor, Goodfellas. There was the unsurpassed dramaturgy of screenwriter Mario Puzo and an exemplary selection of actors. There were already real movie stars and aspiring talents among them. And the innovative work of cameraman Gordon Willis among the advantages of this movie masterpiece. And undoubtedly, there was the masterpiece music created by the great Italian composer Nino Rota. The title track, called The Godfather Waltz, set the all-over tone of the film and symbolized the image of Vito Corleone, as well as the continuity of the fate of the father to the son. By the way, the composer was nominated for an Oscar for the music for the first part, but he received his well-deserved award for the soundtrack to the second part. I wish that Nino Rota were here. I'm sure he would have been as happy as I am and even happier. The idea of a gangster movie was not a new thing in the world of Hollywood. But The Godfather was able to bring something unique to the story of the life of elite bandits. On the one hand, in the film we see the usual image of bad guys created by such predecessors as Underground, Scarface, and The Public Enemy, filmed in the late 20s, early 30s. There are the sounds of machine guns and the shattering glass of shop windows, and freshly starched collars of iron suits. However, despite the fact that at the time films about bandits were at the pinnacle of fame, the image of gangsters was revealed one-sidedly, as cold-blooded and cruel guys who cannot be sympathized with. The mafiosi were waiting for only one outcome. Their inevitably short lives ended in a complete fiasco. At the same time, the brutal gangster way of solving problems was condemned at every opportunity and in any convenient way. The viewer was invited to reflect on the problem of the causes and consequences of gang life, thanks in part to the ready-made moralizing stated in the disclaimers. In the new era of Hollywood, the villains were replaced by anti-heroes. The viewer no longer rubbed their nose in the immorality of the story. They were offered new, more complex characters, torn by contradictions, and it was also up to the audience how to treat them. Here, ruthless thugs, robbers, madmen, or lumpens, with the easy submission of filmmakers, become something like Robin Hood, idealists, 
crazy dreamers. Sometimes it seems that the creators of the new Mafia screen world are just checking how compassionate their audience can be. The viewer has to empathize with the hard life of a gangster and his tragic death again and again. Exactly the same technique is used by the director of The Godfather, Francis Coppola. A dramatic story of a Mafia family unfolds before the audience, evoking compassion and sympathy. The life of gangsters is shrouded in a romantic cloud, and the director reveals in the bandits the depth of feelings, sincerity, and contradictions tearing them apart. The Corleone family, described in the film in the style of royal dynasties, is certainly associated with uncompromising and strong men who certainly adhere to the code of honor. However, the viewer is very little shown the other, dark side of the life of this dynasty, in which ordinary people suffer from bandit affairs. They are involved in prostitution, get hooked on gambling, debts are beaten out of them in a variety of cruel ways, and of course, gangsters kill not only their own kind, but also ordinary mortals. Of course, it's worth noting that not all bandits are shown to be so attractive. For example, the leaders of other clans are not endowed with the Corleone family's inherent sense of self-respect. For example, Don Corleone could easily and firmly refuse to cooperate simply because he considered this or that case dirty. It doesn't make any difference to me what a man does for a living, I understand. But uh, your business is uh, a little dangerous. At the same time, no matter how ambiguous and sometimes romanticized the central characters may seem, director Francis Coppola, paired with cameraman Gordon Willis, found an unobvious but eloquent visual technique through which they demonstrated their real attitude to the gangster world. Thus, most of the scenes where mafia life is shown have dim, artificial light and a very gloomy atmosphere. This technique is used, in particular, in an episode of Don Corleone's famous conversation with the father of his goddaughter. The Undertaker, with whom the first part of the trilogy begins. The Godfather's office is just a mosaic of black spots, poorly lit by lamps. Such an atmosphere conveyed very well the nature of the dark deeds that were committed, both directly inside his office and outside it. In contrast, there is the wedding scene of the Godfather's only daughter, Connie. This event is presented as a colorful, joyful, and sun-filled picture. Shot by shot, we see dancing and hear cheerful music. The whole first film of the trilogy is based on such a technique of the confrontation of light and darkness. At the same time, the darkened office as a metaphorical image of mafia immorality runs through the whole saga. Now, the code of conduct of Italian gangsters, shown in The Godfather, seems archaic. The rule according to which it is necessary to avenge blood for blood. The superiority of family ties over the law. The perception of a world in which there is only one right. The right of the one who is stronger. Women in this cruel world are relegated to the background and are not independent and active participants in Mafia life. For example, no one has ever said the name of Don Corleone's wife throughout the movie. And only one woman, without hesitation, goes against all the rules of the Corleone family, American Kay Adams. She boldly expresses her own opinion and generously shares her broad views on life. In one of the scenes at the table, Kay even allowed herself to smoke. And this was very unusual for girls of those times. The American woman was one of Michael Corleone's tools with which he wanted to show his father and prove to himself that he did not obey the foundations of the family and would never become part of their lives. She became a kind of symbol of Michael's protest, a symbol of his freedom. But it is through Kay's eyes that the director shows us the story of the fall of Vito Corleone's son and the true protagonist of the trilogy. To break out of family ties, Michael joined the army and became a real hero, who received the Navy Cross for bravery for his valiant service. Having grown up in America, having adopted its culture and customs, he did not want to have anything to do with the Mafia and was ashamed of his origin. He did not agree with his father's methods and way of life and tried his best to distance himself from him. Even at his sister's wedding, he did not come in a tuxedo, but in a military uniform. However, in the end, Michael himself became affected by a thirst for power and became a cruel and merciless monster. Such a metamorphosis of the main character took two whole parts. The lives of the son and the father are shown in parallel and it is not difficult to notice that Michael surpasses his father every time in everything that he so selfishly wanted to escape from. Paradoxically, Vito himself did not want a criminal role for his youngest son. 
In the first part of the saga, the development of the characters of father and son is shown as if in contrast. Michael goes more and more into business and competitive showdowns. The colors around him become darker, and he himself seems to go into darkness. His father, Don Corleone, on the contrary, physically weakens and comes out of the darkness, changing into light clothes, basking in the sun, playing with his grandchildren and becoming like a sweet grandfather. Nevertheless, not only the development of the plot shows Michael's transformation into a cold-blooded gangster. All the key points of his transformation are emphasized by additional effects. For example, when he commits the first murder in the name of the family, the viewer hears the sound of a passing train. Another example of enhancing the plot with visual and sound effects is the baptism scene. At the climax, the creators of the film used a parallel editing to play on the contrast again between good and evil. The divine service that takes place at this moment in the church is contrasted with scenes of bloody murders. Thanks to the dynamic editing and shortening of the duration of the shots, the director managed to create a feeling of increasing tension. The main character plunges more and more into darkness, rejecting the unclean in front of the priest. In this scene, not only the little boy was baptized, but also Michael himself. We can say that the main character took the mafia cross. From that moment, there was no way back for him. But unlike Vito, for whom the meaning of life was family, Michael had a different goal, namely revenge. It was revenge which took away the remnants of his humanity. If we talk about chronology, then the first part describes the events from the mid-40s of the 20th century to the half of the 50s. That is, about 10 years. But the second film reveals much more details from the life of the Corleone clan, covering as much as 70 years. And what is remarkable is that the story is both a prequel and a sequel at once. The Godfather Part 2 is also built on a parallel showing of the father and son's stories, in particular their methods of getting out of problematic situations. However, here, Michael Corleone is an already formed mafioso who will stop at nothing, even if he has to kill his own brother and go against the family. Now we can see that in the backlight or penumbra there is the face of the hero of Al Pacino, just as his father was once in the darkness. Michael's facial expressions became frozen and his gaze became unshakable. The ritual that he took over from his father did not carry anything warm. People would perform it not as a sign of respect, but because of the fear of a ruthless criminal. In turn, the main character himself was left completely alone. He had nowhere else to go, no one to talk to, and no one to hug. According to critics and the public, the director exceeded all expectations. After all, he not only managed to achieve the quality of the original, but also to improve it making a multifaceted and versatile tragedy with an eloquent denouement out of a local criminal story. And it would seem that the story should end there, but after 16 years, Coppola shot the third part. As he said in the movie, It's not personal. It's only business. You should know, Godfather. Very well. You want to do business with me? I will do business with you. In fact, the director did not very happily accept the studio's offer to shoot the third part, because he understood that everything important in the life of the Corleone clan had already been said. But the need for money forced him to agree. The thing was that in the period of the late 80s to early 90s, the creative and with them the financial affairs of Francis were not going well. After Coppola shot the outstanding film Apocalypse Now in 1979 and received his well-deserved awards for it, he began to suffer one failure after another, which escalated into 10 years of creative crisis. Therefore, tired of the blows of fate, the director took up the filming of The Godfather Part 3. This time, the audience was presented with the story of the redemption of the already middle-aged, faded, and broken Michael Corleone. If in the second part the hero of Al Pacino killed in the name of the family, then in the third one he was eager to atone for his sins in the name of the family, or rather, children. Corruption was raging in the world, and Michael decided to launder his money and clear his name. 
However, having been baptized once, it is very difficult for the Mafia to get rid of the cross. Of course, the criminal world resists Corleone's departure with all its might. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. The plans and hopes of the main character failed in the same way as the third film itself. The director was accused of almost all the movie's sins. Vague dialogues, lazy presentation, excessive emotionality, and confused acting of Francis' daughter, Sofia Coppola. And the final chord in the devastating criticism was the accusation of a frivolous ending. The audience could not forgive the director for their disappointment because the moral of the story that the end of the Corleone family was predetermined and sad and the future was gloomy was clear even in the finale of the second film. Before continuing, we suggest you click on the subscription button and the bell so you can learn even more interesting facts about your favorite movies. Subscribe and we continue. So what is the value of the third part? If you put aside all expectations and just objectively evaluate this sequel, then a certain and important innovation for the world of The Godfather will still be found. And it lies in the fact that the third film is also a story about the third generation in the Corleone dynasty. And it is worth noting that this generation has absolutely opposite views than their ancestors. They want to manage their own lives, easily challenge the patriarchal traditions brought by their forefathers from unfamiliar Sicily, and flatly refuse any relations with the criminal world. In the third generation, benefactors and liberals are presented to the viewer, who have replaced the bandits who come to church according to tradition. This is the first generation who still managed to catch the American dream, which slipped away from their grandfather. After all, at the time when Vito Corleone was still a little boy from Sicily, he set foot on the land of the USA in the hope of gaining freedom, and lost his last name when the name of the city from which he had been getting out for so long was written instead. He believed that everyone was equal and had the same rights, but it turned out that there was always someone who had more rights. The declared justice was also not available to everyone. The defenseless and the poor had to look for the truth far from Themis. The finale of the story of the Corleone clan, completed in the third film, was a kind of criticism of the American dream, the American world, and corrupt society. In this world, it was no longer possible to achieve material benefits without selling your soul to the devil. Have you watched the third film about the Corleone family? What impression did you get from it? Share your opinion in the comments. The characters created by Francis Coppola paid very dearly for the American dream, but the director himself was more lucky. He has achieved everything he dreamed of and, it seems, even exceeded his own expectations. Yes, there have been ups and downs, but his saga with a not very large budget collected unthinkable box office receipts. The crime genre, in which only a small part of the public was interested, became a popular favorite from the most unpretentious viewer to moviegoers. And for five generations now, The Godfather has been quoted. Francis Coppola showed the world that no canons of the genre can limit a real master who has something to say. Talking about the life of the criminal world, you can raise such deep and important issues as culture, politics, social inequality, and even personal experiences. Both critics and just attentive and caring viewers, of course, noticed that the emotional torments of Michael Corleone shown in the third part associated with the inability to live the old life were very consonant with the experiences of the director himself. He is still a gambler, dramatic, and a pro in his craft, but unfortunately, he is no longer so dexterous and has lost his former skill. Undoubtedly, The Godfather is the pinnacle of Coppola's professional career, his most important and successful creation. Therefore, it was not at all surprising that he did not let it go all his directorial career. For example, for the first time, Coppola from the Dilogy edited the series, building it in accordance with the chronology. So in 1977, The Godfather, a novel for television, was presented to the public. The second transformation was another ending of the third part. The Godfather marked the beginning of a whole dynasty of gangster cinema. Among them are Once Upon a Time in America, shot by Sergio Leone in 1983, the Untouchables, shot in 1987 by Brian De Palma, as well as Scorsese's Goodfellas, which we have already mentioned. Of course, the list would be incomplete without the TV series The Sopranos, consisting of six seasons. 
This series has become a whole event in the history of television. And remember, the main character of the crime drama Breaking Bad, school teacher Walter White, under the weight of his illness, changed so internally that he began to resemble Michael Corleone. This film even used the same technique with darkening, because the scarier the teacher became, the darker the color of his clothes was. Needless to say, The Godfather has become a cult film and an integral part of popular culture. Therefore, the number of followers is so large that it is impossible to count them all and is unnecessary because the film still lives. It is quoted, watched again and again, and rethought. But not only The Godfather is interesting for its secrets. On our channel, you'll find videos that will reveal to you the secrets of making famous films, interesting facts, and crazy theories. Do you want to know more? Click on the pop-up card on the screen and watch. But before that, don't forget to like this video. About Movies was with you. See you.